parrots are the third most popular pet in the world, but the number one most rehomed. Celebrity parrot trainers Dave and Jamie Womack from Bird Tricks combine nearly four decades of parrot training expertise to help put an end to abandoned parrots as they save parrots one person at a time. Welcome to the Parrot Training Podcast. And now, here are your hosts, Dave and Jamie Womack. Everybody, welcome to the Parrot Training Podcast. I'm your host, Dave Womack, joined here today with my beautiful wife, Jamie Lee. So if you're listening to this, it sucks, you can't see her. (laughs) So you can watch it on YouTube or on iTunes. And before we dive into today's topic, I just want to give a huge thank you. We've had tons of amazing feedback. Uh, Our episodes are going crazy on YouTube. We're getting amazing downloads, amazing reviews on iTunes. For those of you guys that have left reviews, thank you so much. If you haven't, go ahead and do it because here's what's going to happen. Over the next few weeks, I'm going to be announcing a contest, all right? And the way you can enter the contest is by leaving a review on iTunes and screen capturing it, sending that screen capture to info at birdtricks.com. And we'll be using those to draw random winners for some prizes that I'll announce soon. So uh, again, if you haven't left your review, go ahead and do that now. And we're going to give away some really cool, fun stuff. Jamie didn't know that. That's why she's silent. I had she's like, no <laughs> idea. I'm like, maybe I should answer. <laughs> what am I winning? <laughs> so today's topic is, uh, it, it's going to be kind of interesting. If you've been following the podcast now, this is our fourth episode. We kind of go straight to the point. We hit a little bit harder than you're used to if you listen to some of our other courses. And I tend to speak quickly. But today's topic is about why it's important to make your bird's life more difficult. And I actually published a video about this during the Morgan series where Morgan was in a five by eight aviary and she had somehow got herself on a Boeing. For those of you that don't know what a Boeing is, it kind of has a, maybe you could explain this. A Boeing shape. No, come on, babe. <laughs> it's like a it's like a spiral rope toy that like you a, can, it has like, like a- like a slinky, in in concept but it stretches out and it's spiral we are literally going to get so many comments of people articulating this way better than us but anyways <laughs> it is you can use it as a perch you can stretch it you can um, put it across you can hang it and how i had it was hanging in this five by eight aviary from the top and so it was kind of more like a swing because there was nothing keeping it stationary right so it was literally just there and morgan a handicapped macaw that i worked with who's about seven years old she got herself on this Boeing and could not get herself off of the Boeing. Now the thing was, is she was fully capable of getting herself off of this Boeing because she has wings and they worked and we already knew that she could fly. (laughs) However, she didn't have the confidence to believe in herself to believe that she could actually get herself off of this Boeing. And I meanly videotaped her struggle (laughs) while not offering to help her. And the point of this video was to show that it's very important to help birds work through a struggle and troubleshoot and problem solve on their own so that they become more confident birds. And that was my entire goal with Morgan is to prove to her that she is capable and she could do so much more than I think even she thought that she could. And so I videotaped her struggle on this Boeing She is leaning, she is reaching, she is doing everything she possibly can to grab the side of the cage and and just get off of this thing or, or try to reach me. And all she really wants is she keeps lifting a foot telling me, please, for the love of God, just put your hand close enough that I can step onto you and this will all be over. And I encouraged her and encouraged her and encouraged her until she took flight off of that Boeing into me. And the whole point of that struggle was to teach her that she could get herself out of that situation. She didn't need me to do it for her. Yeah, so the whole concept to make your bird's life more difficult comes from a place of love. Although the the topic itself sounds like, oh, how cruel that you'd make your bird's life difficult. Let's put it in a human perspective. Would you take the training wheels off your kid's bike or would you leave it on so it's really simple and the kid never falls? No, of course, removing the training wheels is going to make your child's life more difficult for the very short term, but what it does is it builds that kid's confidence in its ability and then gives it ultimately freedom to ride their bike to school, to ride to the grocery store, to have the sense of freedom and self-confidence that a child needs. Well, and so progression because now they have they are able to progress to this completely new level that they didn't even knew know existed. Yeah, and exercise and mental stimulation, physical um, just expansion of energy. So why if you would do that with your own child, why wouldn't you do that 
with a bird. You know, we talk about it all the time and the topic being when you have a captive bird, when you have a pet bird, everybody wants to make their life super easy, give them a 24 hour access to food and that's just not the way birds are wired to function. They're wired to spend their day looking for food, they're wired to forage, they're meant to exert the energy and mental stimulation to try in the hopes of maybe finding food with no guarantee of it. So in the exercise side of it, making Morgan try to get off of this Boeing toy gave her the confidence to realize, you know what, I may have a messed up foot, but I'm fully capable. And so she built that confidence and all that translated into uh, a bird that didn't need to be as desensitized to things because she's more confident. She could overcome those things naturally. Jamie was giving this bird the tools to self-entertain, to self-overcome these challenges and push herself. And, and with every little step that she grew, she became more confident. Other sides of making your bird's world a little bit more difficult is Storm. You know, <laughs> yeah. so, so Storm was this really fat, there's no other way to put it, uh, Amazon parrot. And Severely it was- really obese. Yeah. A total fatty. <laughs> and had a hard time, like couldn't fly, could barely walk and through making his life slightly more difficult by putting the food at one end of the eight foot wide cage and the water on the other side, and then there was a perch. So the bird's getting this exercise going back and forth on the perch, naturally burning off a few of those rolls. Then she put the Boeing around the perch so he's climbing up and over and through, and it's like, you know, you could just practically hear him cursing her out the entire way. He's like, eh, son of a yeah, yeah, just go, yeah. As he's getting from the food to the water to make the soup, and then he's got to go back to get the food to put it in the water to make more soup. And what happened is he ended up, well, losing some weight, so he was eventually able to fly. But by making his life slightly more difficult, it allowed him to self push himself to build the confidence that he needed to become a more fit more mentally fit and more stable, energetic, healthy bird. And really birds just realize how capable they are, that they don't need you for absolutely everything because a bird that is completely dependent on you, although it simulates love to some people because they want to feel needed, we shouldn't be putting that responsibility on our animals. We should be making them very confident and capable animals instead. So if they're in a situation that they don't want to be in, they can get out of it and they don't have to communicate in different ways of biting or aggression or freaking out. They are capable of just getting themselves out of that situation. And that's really what we're going for. And with Storm, you know, making his life more difficult was my way of getting him a form of exercise. So when he first tried to, uh, to actually go across this perch, I had used this act, this fatty manila rope that we had discovered and I had wound it around. Well, it's so like fat of a rope, it's so thick that you think you can stand on it and be okay. But what happened was because it was, it was only latched at the two sides and the rest was just kind of woven and loose, he would go to step on it and the whole thing would shift. And so he was having to use all these muscles and all these balancing sort of acrobatics. He would have to put his wings out. He would have to reach up and regrip, and he would have to do a lot more than you would think a parrot would have to do to get from water to food on each side of the cage. And what it did was it just made him a better bird so that things didn't phase him. You know, I, I always laugh at that cartoon movie with the ants and they're all in a line and they're taking food to the hole, to the ant hole or whatever, and somebody drops a leaf in the middle of the line and all the ants freak out. And they're like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, we've lost our line and it's like, Ugh. and they panic <laughs> because they can't figure out that all you have to do is go around the leaf. Or move the, le the leaf. Or move the leaf, <laughs> and eventually they do, but in that moment of chaos, they do not realize that there's another way, right? Yeah. They're just like, oh my gosh, there's a leaf in the way, it's over, we're never gonna get there. And we need to teach our birds that that is not the case. Just because you put a toy in the way of a perch, they can still find a way around, um, or a way through, which is more ideal. That's when a it comes great to a analogy, that's a great analogy. I haven't seen Thank that cartoon, you. so. Yeah, it's a bug's life. I haven't seen a bug's life. Oh my gosh, babe, I know what we're doing on the Disney cruise. We're gonna edit videos because we have some amazing products coming up. We've got <laughs> the Stop Screaming course that we produced and we actually just filmed our, uh, our, our hormones course, which is phenomenal because a lot of people are dealing with those issues now, but uh, I digress. I'm so, just gonna say, we're gonna need a 
we're gonna need a break from editing. You're gonna watch Bugs Life. <laughs> I really it's, want to see what happens. It's early on in the movie. When the leaf, Don't okay. Worry. <laughs> all right, good. So, what does this not look like? All right. Now, we, if you study some of our stuff, it's very important for us to show you and tell you what this should look like, but as equally important for you to understand what it isn't, right? So, this isn't like a tormenting, taunting type behavior that you're, you know, you're you're gloating over the fact that you made your bird's life difficult. And it can't break through. Like the whole the whole purpose of this is I set these birds up to do things that they actually could accomplish and that I knew that they could push through, not things that were so far fetched. If I would have done that on day one with oh, Morgan, geez. that would have been awful. But because I had spent so much time building her up to that, I knew she was capable of that. She just didn't know yet, but she was willing to push through. So you have to understand where that line is because if you set a bird up to fail, if you're intentionally setting it up to fail, uh, that's not building confidence. That's completely going in a different direction. Yeah, and and there's a there's a very clear line between doing this out of love and compassion and wanting to, to help the bird grow in a very constructive uh, baby step sort of way and then just being evil, right? Like if you put a bowl of food outside the cage and a carabiner on there and you're expecting the bird to figure out how to undo the carabiner to open the door and James Bond his way down to get to the food, that's just not practical and that's a terrible way to teach your bird foraging. However, if you want to do foraging to help make your bird's life slightly more difficult to enhance its overall mental ability to problem solve, which is a great thing to do, you would start by putting a treat in a bowl and just a piece of paper over the bowl and let the bird see you do this. And the bird bumps the piece of paper and oh look, oh, there's food in there, right? And then that would go a little bit more complex and a little bit harder and a little bit harder slowly, just like you would teach the spin in very small steps or you teach targeting in very small steps. And that's a kind of progression that we're talking about here. Yeah, especially when it comes to foraging, I've always kind of associated it to almost annoying your bird if you kind of look at it from that <laughs> from that perspective. That's kind of how I see it because when I first started, Storm was really my, my first bird that I really de delved into foraging with. And what I did was originally I started with his food in a dish and I put wooden blocks in there and I put crinkled up pieces of paper in there. So it was annoying, right? Like who puts that in with your food? That, that's kind of rude, that's kind nature. of annoying. <laughs> nature, nature puts <laughs> right. leaves and rocks in there. Um, so, so what he had to do was just simply go, hey, what are these things doing in here? And toss them out or just move them over to get to his food. Well, then the next time I did it, what Dave said, where I put a piece of paper over it and he's like, why, why is there paper over, my, I'm just gonna move it. Really easy, then there's all these blocks in there too, I have to move those, then I eat my food. Well, the next time I crinkled the paper over the top, really stuffed it with things and then put a rubber band over it so that he couldn't just move it over, he had to actually tear through it to get through. And we're kind of talking about that. So you wouldn't just start with making it impossible for him to get in and see what's in there. You might have to do that where you actually, you know, break through the paper and show that there's something worthwhile in there. So it's it's in approximations, as Dave was saying, because you're building confidence. So you need steps to get there. You don't just jump way far and let your bird fail because then it's going to be nervous to try the next time. Exactly, like the first time a kid rides their bike, they're not gonna not have training wheels, right? Unless, I mean, they'll be fancy bikes, the striders, the striders and stuff. But, but for the most part, that's how you learn is, is through baby steps and small approximations. Here's another example of what this looks like too. If you're teaching indoor flight, which I believe personally that everybody should, so that the bird possesses the skills that if and when it happens to get out on accident, these things happen, then your bird possesses most of the skills to be able to come back down safely. Well, part of that training is if the bird, air fingers quote, crashes, right? Like the bird kind of goes to the ground and doesn't return to you for some reason. As long as your bird is in a, not in immediate danger, right? So there's no dogs running around or cats running around or kids running around that might mangle the bird and it didn't hit a window and fall and might be hurt. Like as long as the, it's a controlled, uh, we'll call it a controlled descent. I mean, it's basically the bird didn't come back to you. Don't immediately go rescue that bird. If, if best case scenario, wait where you are and coax the bird to come back to you. Now this is a small little detail, but by making that bird's life slightly more difficult in that scenario, you're teaching a really valuable lesson. That bird just learned in that scenario that it has to figure out how to climb over a couple of shoes and a sweatshirt to go six feet across the ground to come back to you. Translate that over the long haul. What if you didn't do that and you just went over and you're like, oh, you poor thing. 
I hope you're okay, let me pick you up and, and pet you all the wrong ways, then you're teaching the bird that don't worry, I'm gonna come over and pick you up and stroke down your back. Like, there's so many wrong things about that because fast forward a year, two years later, the bird accidentally gets out because you've got a kid or a dog that knocks open the door or a window or a million other scenarios, and now the bird's 80 feet up in a tree you have conditioned it that, hey, you make my life easy. You're gonna come up here and get me. And that's just not gonna be the case. But if you've helped build this confident bird who by not babying it, you're preparing it for a much better, longer, healthier life where it's not stressed out by everything because you've helped build its confidence through making his life slightly more difficult. Now that bird is going to confidently look at the tree and say, yeah, I got this. You got the target stick down there. I know how to come over and touch the stick. I'm gonna figure out how to touch that stick. And that's mental misdirection. You're not having the bird, hey, I gotta figure out how to fly down out of this 80 foot tree that I've never descended from. You're changing the mindset of the bird to, oh, I know how to overcome these obstacles. We've done this in the house. I know how to get past different objects that I'm not familiar with to come over and touch the end of the stick. And I can tell you right now, as I slow down and take a breath, <laughs> we have saved more clients who we've never met by helping them understand getting their bird out of a tree just through targeting. And again, that comes down to building a more confident bird through just don't make your bird's life incredibly easy. By adding subtle, small challenges in, in small approximations, meaning make it a little bit more difficult each and every single time, you're just gonna build a more confident bird and ultimately if it gets outside, you've got a much stronger chance of being able to recover that bird. And honestly, a lot of the things that we talk about both on our YouTube channel, in our courses, and here on this podcast are things that are techniques designed to help you and your bird's relationship for the long term. So there's tons of techniques or things that we could say that would help you right here, right now and, and fix it real quick, but in the long term won't actually help you. And I think that it's the long term that we're in this for birds are most likely going to outlive us and we need to set them up for success for their entire lives not just ours and so these types of concepts are incredibly important for your bird long term and going forward and i hope that you guys can understand that and see value in that and understand maybe some of the other concepts that if they don't resonate with you right then maybe it doesn't apply to you in that way but at some point it probably will so i really encourage you guys to go back to things maybe ch techniques that you've heard a little bit about that you're just like, ah, oh, that doesn't really apply to me. I don't really think my bird falls under that category and listen to it another time and see if now it applies to you because all of these techniques are meant to form your relationship and I guess strengthen your relationship long-term with your bird by making your bird a more confident bird um, just in general. And I think that it goes a long way with pet parrots everywhere to understand these concepts and how to apply them properly. As she said, it's a lifetime that you're building for this bird. It's not about your short period of time on earth with this amazing creature. It's about leaving it a legacy, setting it up for success for its entire lifetime. And, and we can't stress that enough. It's, it's so important. So that wraps up our time. We are out of time, but thank you so much for listening. If you got value out of this, and I hope that you did, and I trust that you did, we are growing this organically. We're trying to make this uh, an incredible movement to help more people save parrots one person at a time. If you feel like we achieved some of that today and you got some value, please do yourself and other birds a huge favor. Obviously it helps us too. If you enjoy what you're, what you're hearing, uh, tell a friend. That's all we ask. We're not trying to sell you a bunch of products, but if you can share this with somebody who gets value out of it, ultimately that's what we're after. So thanks for watching or listening and we'll see you next week on the Parrot Training Podcast. Nailed it. Thanks for listening to the Parrot Training Podcast with Dave and Jamie Womack. New episodes released every Wednesday at 9 a.m. Pacific Time. Don't forget to subscribe and share this podcast.